Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit more about cell complexes. To be more precise, I would like to tell you about operations on those complexes. Um, if you don't remember what cell complexes are, we will see a lot of examples and, and I'm sure you will remember. Uh, the point is, of course, um, that you kind of can construct those cell complexes cell by cell and each cell itself is very simple. And most of the reasonable uh, operations you can perform on topological spaces, you can do them on cell complexes and you get a nice induced cell complex. And that's the topic of the video. Okay, so to, to get us all on the same page, um, probably you are way ahead of me anyway, um, let's start by recalling basically what a cell complex is. So let's say you have this topological space here, this a disk with two holes, so this is my X, and I want to have a cell decomposition of this of this uh, space. What, what is a cell decomposition? Well, you have zero cells, one cell, two cells, three cells, four cells, five cells. I mean, this is a two-dimensional space. You don't need three cells. You don't need four cells. So two cells, one, zero cells, one cells, and two cells. So in all of my illustrations in this video, um, I'm not really good at illustrating three-dimensional or four-dimensional things. So I will stay with two dimensions. Um, the co color code is, the purple is zero dimension, it's a zero, it has zero cells. Uh, green are the one cells and this pink red one are the two cells. So in this case, I can construct it as follows. This construction is not unique, right? Remember cell complexes can be constructed in various ways. Um, but anyway, so you want to have find some construction basically, and then go on from there. So I, I have three zero cells, one, two, three. I put them on the outside disk and on the two inside disks. Uh, I connect them by vertices, basically. I have, so one cells, one cells are just intervals, right? Zero cells are just points, one cells are just intervals. I connect them by intervals, I have five of them. Um, it's always a bit tricky to remember that an interval in this case can also be glued together along, uh, along well, li like a circle. So the outside one, for example, is an interval glued together so that the boundary points are the same. Okay, so I have uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five of them. And then I have this one skeleton, which is just the green and the purple bit, and I glue in a disc. So the two cell is just a disc, and I glue it all the way around. This, 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 this. Um, and then paste it to uh, the one skeleton. And then I get this picture, which um, the, the, the main point here is that the disc is glued in in a, in a funny way. So um, let me just do it again here. So secretly I have those edges here and the disc is glued in in this way. Right, let me do it again, because it's not, it's not quite obvious, right? So if you just stare at this picture and where's the disc? Well, it's glued in in this funny way. So you always have to use kind of the zero edges in this case to um, to, to really be able to glue in a disk. Anyway, um, so the point about cell complexes, and maybe that was part of the uh, cell complex video, is that they're pretty flexible. A lot of spaces, a lot of lot of spaces we really care about are cell complexes. So they are flexible enough to contain a huge number of examples. That's always good. Um, Usually, if you have a very flexible notion that contains a lot of examples, then you also run into the problem of containing a lot of counterexamples. So the theory you can try to build from um, notion X might be pretty boring because your range of examples is just too big. So kind of the, the whole balance you need to find is you need a, a notion that is reasonably flexible, but on the other hand, reasonably rigid, such as you can actually do something with your notion. And cell complexes are exactly uh, in in this in this in this range of flexible and 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 rigid balancing one another. Um, so they're really good. So you can prove a lot of theorems about cell complexes and then about uh, your example spaces. So the question I would like to address today is how can you construct new cell complexes out of old ones? In particular, with an eye on operations you actually already know from set point topology from general topology, standard uh, operations on topological spaces. Here's an example of a standard operation of a, topolo of a topological space, the product. So the product of cell complexes is naturally a cell complex, works as follows. So here's my example. 
I have two spheres and I, I, the sphere is always easiest built by just using one zero cell and the corresponding uh, one cell in this case. So just one point and I glue an interval to that point. And well, the product is a torus. And how can you see this on the cell structure? And here comes how it works. So what are the new zero cells? The new zero cells, well, in this case, you just get one of them. And the way you do it is you take the zero cells from one copy and the zero cells from the other copy. And in all possible combinations, in this case, I only have one of them. So there's only one combination. Um, so you only get one new zero cell. And the only thing you need to remember here that you use addition. So you have a zero cell and a zero cell. So zero plus zero is zero. That's why you, you use a zero cell and a zero cell to construct another zero cell. For a one cell, you would, would like to write something like one plus zero equals one, or alternatively zero plus one equals one. So for one cells, you take one one cell from one side and a zero cell from the other. One one cell from one side and the zero cell from the other. In this case, um, the topological space you just get is just a circle. So you, the one cells of your torus are just, are just the, the circles you get from here. And for two cell, you would like to write down this equation. In this case, one plus one equals two. You could have two plus zero equals two, but I, I don't have any two cells to begin with. Um, oh, two plus zero equals zero is of course very nice. Two plus zero equals two or zero plus two equals two. I do always want to make this calculation. So I could have a two cell and I could uh, take a product with a zero cell from the other copy to create a new two cell. In this case, um, I don't have any two cells. So uh, I only have one cells um, and that takes a product of um, the two one cells to create a new two cell. And that's the surface of the torus. And that's actually easy to see in this case because you take a circle, that's one of them. And you take the other one in this way. You just wrap it around the other circle. You take a circle and wrap it around the other circle. And in doing so, you create the surface of the torus. And in doing so, you just created a cell structure on the torus by using the cell structure of a uh, uh, pretty simple space, the one cell. So products uh, of cell complex are, are pretty, pretty good. They work pretty nicely. Except that you have this problem that in each stage, um, you just have to make sure that you take A, uh, an A cell and a B cell from the other to create an A plus B cell in, in the new space. That's the only thing you need to remember. Another operation I would like to address are quotients of cell complexes. So in, in this example, I have my D2 constructed in the obvious way how we would construct D2. Uh, and you glue in your, your two cell and I have S1 in the same way as before. And I take this quotient space and I claim that this is a sphere. And how do you see that? Well, the quotient does the following. So everything in the quotient is sent to a zero cell. That's basically what the quotient does. So um, the quotient just kills all of these, right? So it kills, um, it, it, well, it kills in the sense that it identifies it with a point. So you get just one zero cell, which is exactly this point here on my sphere. And the two cell, you just don't touch it at all because in the quotient, you don't have a two cell. And the two cell is really the surface of a balloon. And the point is the little point at the bottom of the balloon in my picture here. And what you now do is you, you, you kind of, glue everything together along that point. So here is the purple point down here, right? That's the purple point up here. So you, you take your sphere and you construct it by using the surface of a balloon. And so you hold your hand such that the air can't leave the balloon. And that's, that's how you can construct the quotient, the sphere as a quotient. And by construction, you have identified everything except the two cell to a point. So you just have a zero cell and a two cell. Uh, exactly as in this picture here. And without going too much into details, links are of course in the description and Hatch has a nice uh, um, chapter about it. And of course, Hatch's book is also linked in the description. And I like to say it again, it's free. So really download it, it's really good. Um, and the point is cell complexes are rigid enough to be closed under the following sets of operations or rigid, rigid and flexible enough to be closed undertaking. 
products, quotients, suspensions, wedge sums, wedge products. Really nice. Um, for example, the wedge sums are really easy. You just glue things together in this case. You can wedge sum two circles to get this figure eight thing in its natural uh, well cell decomposition by having a zero cell and two. Oh, here's one, here's another one, and two one cells. Um, here's a picture of how to construct the sphere from the suspension of a circle. Uh, suspension would create it, 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 it's a different cell complex. You can also construct the cell, uh, the sphere, by using an, an upper half sphere and a lower half sphere and glue them together along the boundary. Um, and you would do this uh, by using suspensions of, of the standard cell structure on the, uh, on the circle. Um, I have something written in gray here. So take product is a little bit tricky Then you have to be careful with infinities. And I dare to write down an example why this is tricky. Also, I usually only like to think about finite cell complexes and for finite cell complexes, there's never really a problem. The problem is that this in the infinite case on cell complexes, you have this weak topology and that's in some sense a bit weird. It's not quite what you usually would expect or would you would expect in some examples. And here's a funny example, um, which is not so trivial. So, so the link is in the description. Um, if you really want to take a look, uh, which is not so trivial. Um, and it shows that the product of two cell complexes might not be uh, the product space. And it basically works like this. You, you take those stars uh, for, for where I is the number of rays. And obviously those stars are cell complexes. I mean, in this case, you have here your, your zero cells and you glue them together in a very naive way uh, together with one cells, like the star and the number of rays is, is the, the size of I. They're obviously cell complexes. Uh, so the product is a cell complex, but it's not the product space. In case I, the, the, the number of uh, rays is, is really big. So one of them needs to be uncountable and the other one needs to be countable. This is kind of a classical counterexample in whatever part of topology you would like to call it. If that was too quick, no problem. I don't expect you to really understand all the details. The link is in the description. As I said, this is a bit tricky. So infinities are always a bit tricky in, in when you work with cell complexes. Just the only take a really takeaway message from this slide is just be careful with infinities if you work with cell complexes. If you're like me and you say, well, I live in a finite world, everything is finite, then you don't really care. But otherwise, just, just be a bit careful. Okay, wrap up. Um, cell complexes in between flexible and rigid, uh, we like them very much. And most of the standard topological constructions actually have a nice analog for cell complexes. Cell complexes are closed under, under whatever products, wedge sums, smash joints, and so on. Yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.